Hey, I'm Bobby and I like to make stuff. Today we're going to talk CNC versus laser and make a sign. I don't very often get the chance to make a sign, but I've got kind of a commission project a little bit different today. There's an artist online that I love his work. His name is Brian Kessinger. You've probably actually seen a lot of what he's done. He makes tons of great Star Wars art that kind of looks like Calvin and Hobbes. He does a bunch of different things. He's extremely talented, but he recently reached out to me to see if I could help him make some CNC files for one of his newest pieces of artwork. This piece of artwork was inspired by the book of Boba Fett. Of course, I'm a fan. So I wanted to just jump in and help, but instead of just giving him some files, I want to make him a sign. So we're going to jump into the process of making a high quality sign, hopefully to give you some ideas, some tips and tricks that you can use, maybe make some signs for other people or signs of your own creative designs. All right, let me go show you the piece that we're talking about and then we'll figure out how to do it. Here's the piece that we're talking about. Now this was inspired obviously by the new Yankee workshop with Norm Abrams. And this is alluding to a particular scene in episode two of the Book of Boba Fett. If you haven't seen it, I'm not gonna spoil it. If you have seen it, you know exactly what this is talking about. Basically our goal here is to make a sign that's as accurate as possible to this piece of art. So instead of making it by hand, we're actually gonna use the CNC and the laser so we can make it exact. You can do every single bit of this in a million different ways, and we'll talk about some options along the process, but we're gonna use the laser for the text, so it's nice and crisp, even the thin parts, and then we're gonna use the CNC to get all this detail work in here and some of the outer shapes. So the first step here is to break down the artwork into individual pieces, and that will allow us to make cut paths and designs for all the text and all the art, and then we can put them on the right machines. The artwork we got from Brian was in a Photoshop file, which is not ideal for CNC, but you can make it work. You can export all the layers as different pieces of artwork, bring them into Fusion or whatever you're using. In our case, we're going to use Fusion 360 because we can make tool paths for the CNC and the laser. We can also build a three-dimensional sign around the artwork if we need to. So if you're going to be putting artwork onto a physical sign or onto a building, you can model all that stuff around it in Fusion. But don't worry, if you've never used Fusion 360, we can help you out. We've got an online course called Fusion 360 for Makers that will get you started and teach you tons of stuff about the software and all the different ways you can use it. We'll put a link down in the description if you wanna go check it out. We've got some of the pieces uh, finished off the machines. Some were with CNC, some were with laser. And the next step on all of these is to get primer on them so that they'll take paint well. MDF soaks up paint so you wanna seal the surface. We'll get to that in a minute, but first I think it would be helpful, hopefully to you, to talk about why we chose which machine for which piece. We use the CNC for this because it's three quarter inch material. It's just easier to cut through this and we wouldn't have any burning on the outside just for these thicker parts. For all the other pieces we're using the laser so far, mainly because it's faster, but also because you actually don't lose a lot of material. We cut out all these letters that are gonna be on the sign, but we cut them out of a piece that we need to use as a layout template. We can lay this down, put the letters in there and they get perfectly spaced, perfectly placed on the final sign. If we use the CNC, you would have a big loss around each piece that was cut out. But with a laser, with such a thin kerf, you don't really lose much. We get a lot of questions about whether it's more beneficial to have a CNC or a laser in a wood shop. It's entirely subjective and everyone will give you a different answer. So let's just break down a few of the things that you might wanna consider between the two machines. One is cut depth. With a CNC, you've got different bits. You can swap those bits out. They've got different properties, different thicknesses, and they can create different amount of detail. Now, the thinner the bit goes, the more likely you are to break that bit. But on the other side, a laser just has the thickness of a laser. So you can get really, really fine detail, but if you need to cover a very large area, it's gonna take a lot more time. If you're trying to cut through material, you have to think about how those machines are being used. On the CNC, it's gonna follow the same path multiple times, pushing the bit down further into the material each time. If you use the right bit, you can end up with a really clean cut through even thick material. 
Now, if you need to cut thick material on the laser, you still have to make multiple passes through the material, and honestly, you're burning the same cut the deeper you go. So the deeper the cut is, the more you end up with a V-shaped cut as it's burning away material at the top. So typically, with most lasers that you have in your house, you're limited to about half inch material. But with the CNC, you're really only limited to the height of the bit and the vertical travel of your spindle. Another thing to think about in regards to those things is the kerf of the cut. On a CNC, that kerf is related to the width of the bit. On the laser, it's just to the laser, which is really tiny, so you get a lot more detail. Another big consideration is what you end up with after you're done using both of these machines. A CNC creates a lot of sawdust and it goes everywhere and makes a big mess. You have to deal with that like other woodworking tools versus a laser which creates smoke that you absolutely do not want to breathe. So you have to be able to either vent that outside or get an entire system that can clean the air coming off of that machine. Another thing to consider is the material that you're probably gonna be using on either one of these machines. On a CNC, you can cut through pretty much every plastic, every type of wood and non-ferrous metals like aluminum or brass. You'd have to have a really beefy machine to get through steel. On a laser, you can pretty much cut through any type of wood, uh, paper, cardboard, things like that, and some plastics, but not all of them. Some plastics will actually release terrible chemicals when they get burned, so you gotta do your research there. Again, this is entirely subjective. It's totally up to what you plan on doing. Me personally, I think a CNC is a more versatile tool in a shop than a laser. Get that one first, and if you can afford it, eventually get both. Okay, we're gonna jump back into getting primer on these pieces so that we can actually get them covered in paint. And I've done a little bit of testing and research, and I wanna show you what I came up with. In the past, I've always used this filler primer, same stuff I use for 3D prints, because it's a really thick body, so you can spray it on, it's sandable, it will seal the surface. But this time, I really want to try something new, so I reached out to my friend Derek from Malden, who does awesome sign work, and asked him what he uses to seal MDF. He gave me a bunch of different responses, I tried a bunch of different things that he sent me, and I ended up on aluminum primer. I don't know why, but this is actually a pretty good way to give a nice surface finish to MDF and it dries really quickly. A lot of the other options were things like varnishes and they worked really well, but they would take 24 hours to dry before you could top coat them with anything. This is like 20 minutes. So I'm gonna take this stuff and spray a nice thick coat on all of the MDF and then run over it with a really light sandpaper. If I need to hit any corners again, I can do that. And we're talking maybe an hour to have everything primed. Got several coats of primer on all these pieces and I did a light sanding with some 300 grit paper, just like really, really light, actually 320 grit, uh, over the surface and then did a final coat. And that makes it nice and flat, nice and smooth. And so this thing is all ready for paint, but I wanted to point out a couple of things. This back panel is what you're gonna see through this frame. So this back panel is actually gonna get painted into a yellow color. And then the, all the text is gonna be yellow, everything else is gonna be red. So we're gonna do all these pieces separately. But before we put paint on them, we have to make sure that the surface is as clean as possible. So, a couple of ways to do that. Compressed air will blow off all the stuff that's hanging from the sanding, but then using a tack cloth is absolutely necessary. This is like kind of a sticky cloth that you take and you wipe over something and it grabs dust and takes it with it. So it doesn't just push it around, it actually sticks the dust to the cloth. These are disposable and you can buy them in big packs so you get a whole bunch at a time. If you're gonna try to get a nice finish on pretty much anything, this is a fantastic step. Okay, I'm gonna get these wiped down and then we'll spray some paint. Wipe it montage. <laughs> Now that we're waiting on the paint to dry for the rest of the sign, we need to talk about the artwork that's going in the middle. This is the kind of big focal point. And for this piece, we're gonna use the CNC. So far, we've relied on the laser a lot to get big shapes, but this has a lot of detail. And there's two colors, there's black and white sections. And so we're gonna use the CNC to cut through a single material to get both of those colors. This is called Color Core. This is a test cut that we did. This color core is a layered plastic. So in this particular case, it's got a black, then a white, then a black layer. You can get this in all different color sets, some with two, some with three colors, and it's pretty inexpensive. We're gonna use this because we can cut through the top black layer to show the white underneath. So a single cut on the CNC will show us two colors of any piece of artwork. This is all plastic, so it's gonna last outside if you're making outdoor signs. Another thing to think about, and it's pretty inexpensive. <laughs> 
This video is sponsored by Simply Safe. You've heard us talk about them before, and we're going to talk about them again because they are awesome. Simply Safe is a comprehensive security system that you can build out on the website. You pick all the sensors, all the outdoor cameras, the smart locks, everything that you need and then you get it shipped to home. You get a box in the mail and everything that you need to set up the system is right there and you can do the entire thing in about 30 minutes. You don't have to wait on a professional installer because it's that easy. And once you've got it set up, you've got 24 seven interactive monitoring for about a dollar a day. And that lets Simply Safe keep an eye on your property all the time. And if there's ever a problem with any of your sensors, they can dispatch police or firefighters right away. Personally, we've had Simply Safe in our home for many, many years. We recently got a system for our office. We got one for my sister-in-law at her business. And now we're getting one for Anthony, who's right behind the camera. <laughs> They can't see you wave. It's a great system. It's easy to set up and we've had a really great experience dealing with the people at Simply Safe and with setting the system up ourselves. You've got all sorts of sensors available to protect your property. You've got smoke detectors, water sensors, you've got glass break sensors, indoor and outdoor cameras, everything you need for all the different parts of your home or your business. Whether you've ever thought about getting a security system or not, Simply Safe is a fantastic option. It's trusted by security experts and they secure over 3 million Americans. Definitely check it out. It's a cost effective and really cool way to secure your stuff. In fact, right now you can save 20% when you sign up for interactive monitoring and you get a month for free. So go to simplysafe.com slash ILTMS to learn more. Big thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. I've got all these different pieces painted of their final colors and I'm really happy with the finish. You could always continue to sand, reapply color, and just build up the paint so you get a nice, incredibly glossy finish, but I think they look really good after about two or three coats of each color. So now it's time to stack all these pieces up and glue them together. Since everything is coated with paint, it's not gonna absorb glue very well. So I'm gonna use contact cement. This is barge and you can use it pretty much to attach anything to anything else. You take this stuff and you paint it on two separate surfaces and then let those dry. And then after about like five or 10 minutes, you stick them together and it's an incredibly strong bond. So I'm gonna be using barge to layer all these pieces and then we'll talk about how to put the text on. I've got all the wood pieces of this frame put together with the barge, and I'm gonna use the barge to put down this plastic, but I wanted to point something out. The barge cement and most contact cements are not actually gonna stick very well to this plastic. This is ABS, and really this needs to have a solvent kind of meld it into something else. But in this particular case, the box that this is going in was CNC'd out to fit this exactly. So this piece will actually probably stay in place just with friction. The contact cement is really just adding a little extra friction to the back surface, but it's not really adhering very well from this plastic to that paint. Now, if you're doing a sign that has some like maybe floating pieces of plastic like letters, those really need a solvent or some specific glue for that plastic to hold it on. Just wanted to throw that out there because in a lot of cases, this would not be the correct option for this piece. This thing is looking fantastic. And next up, we have to add all the text. Now, luckily we lasered that text out of a piece and went ahead and got the profile cut at the same time. So this will act as a template. So we can drop this thing right in, match it right up with the curve and the top of the image. And it's a perfect placement template. Now, each one of those letters is gonna be held in with CA glue. So I have to be really careful to just put enough glue to hold them down, but not accidentally get any of it on this because I don't want this thing glued to the image and I don't want the text glued to this thing. Another thing is that I cannot use activator. The activator will either crinkle the spray paint or leave a white residue. So you wanna avoid that when you're doing stuff like this. This is gonna take a little bit of time for me to do. So while I'm laying these out, let me give you my final thoughts on whether you should buy a CNC or a laser. So my opinion as to whether you should get a CNC or a laser, if you can only afford one, is to get a CNC. I think they're both really valuable, but honestly, I think that a CNC is more versatile. You can cut more types of material. You can do different types of cuts. I think you can just get more out of that machine, but they both definitely have strengths and it all comes down to how you plan to use it. Like for instance, if you have any interest in doing leather projects, a CNC is not really gonna be great for that, but a laser is perfect. 
If you need to cut a lot of acrylic or some other plastics, a laser is great for that. But if you've got a bunch of plywood you need to cut through and cut out big shapes, or maybe even do 3D carving, a CNC would be way more valuable than a laser in those cases. The sign is all finished. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Brian's really psyched about it, so now we just have to pack it up and send it all the way out to California so he can hang it up in his shop. Be sure to go check out his artwork if you've not seen it already, and we're gonna put some links to files for this sign if you wanna make your own. The whole CNC laser thing is very subjective, and there's probably a lot of you that have those tools in your shop. You may have other ideas, suggestions that I didn't mention in this video for people to consider. So please, leave those down in the comments and we can all learn together. We've got lots of different types of projects, tons of videos for you to go watch Watch, so be sure to check those out and if you're not subscribed be sure to do that as well that's it for this one thanks for watching we'll see you next time this program was made possible by our members of the maker alliance and the support from viewers like you thank you this is a new sign and that's <laughs> or a laser in a wood laser laser while we're waiting on that paint to <laughs> obviously <laughs>